All right, welcome. My name is Amelia Thompson, and I'm with the Hitchcock Center. And I'm here to show you guys all around this forest. And we're going to be looking at things that are appearing in springtime. So we'll be looking at trees, how to figure out what they are when they don't have any leaves on them. And when I'm done here, I encourage you to get outside, do it yourself. Come on. So here I am with a coniferous tree, one just my height. So this right here is a white pine. The way I know that is because it has needles rather than those flat leaves. These are just a modified leaf that allow a coniferous tree to keep its needles all through the winter and stay green. It helps it survive through the winter. And the way that I know it's a white pine is actually, there's a great little trick to it. Now, if you get close, these little bunches of needles are all together in a certain set number. And for the white pine, you just know, have to know how to spell white. So if you look at the needles, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five. So that spells W-H-I-T-E, white. If it had three, you, you would know it was a red pine. So right now, you guys looking pretty healthy. Still small, but we'll get pretty high up there. All right, let's go find some more. <laughs> All right. Now, this is another um, example of a white pine. We already looked a little bit at the, the pine needles and how to tell it's a white pine. But um, another giveaway for a pine is if you come close, you can see these rings of branches around the trunk. They come off, you know, all the branches come off this one ring. Now, that, this tells us how old this tree is. So for each notch, there's another year. So you can very easily go out, find yourself a pine, and then find yourself a pine that's as old as you are. This one looks to be about my age. You can see all the nodules just ringing around. Right. Here we are again in front of a nice beautiful red maple, but we're actually not going to look at the tree this time. We're going to be looking at something that's growing on the tree. Now, you can see right behind me, there's a vine snaking up behind this tree. Now this is called Toxicodendron radican, or you might know it as poison ivy. So poison ivy is one of the few vines that are in the forest, and its name, Toxicodendron radican, radicans mean, meaning root. And this, you can see, has lots of little hairy roots coming off this vine. And you can see it's quite thick. A lot of people don't know that poison ivy can climb trees quite well. But you can see, even though it doesn't have that, that leaf, you know, that shiny, the three-tipped leaf, it, it's got this very identifiable root coming off of it. Very hairy. I've found another vine in our forest. This one doesn't have those hairy um, hairy roots coming off of it, so I know that it's not poison ivy. Um, I know that this is a grapevine. You can tell it's nice and thick. You'll find them, you know, different thicknesses, but this one's quite large. Um, it has this very kind of like peeled bark coming off of it, coming off of it kind of like string or hair. And if you look, it goes all the way up, kind of differing coloring patterns. Now these actually do produce grapes, edible grapes, that, are, that arrive in the fall time. So it's not quite there yet. If you find them in the woods, as long as you know that they're stable enough. <laughs> but you wanna make sure to give them a good shake before you start climbing all the way up here. We definitely have a nice black cherry here. It's a really great example of that cornflake bark. Look how it almost looks like peeling paint. Kind of a nice dusty gray color. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, follow me. This is pretty cool. So if you look at this tree ahead, you're going to see this big mass. What is it? Is it a egg mass, an egg sac, or a beehive? No, this is part of the tree. This is called a burl. And this happens when the tree is injured somehow, hurt, and it basically builds this scab around it. 
This looks like to be a pretty big wound. This is definitely one of the biggest burls I've seen in a while. On this nice black oak. All right, so here we have a tiny little cluster of, of saplings of young trees right here. If you look around, I'm noticing where we are in the forest. We have lots of coniferous trees blocking the sunlight, but in this tiny opening, these trees have managed to, to grow. So I look at these trees and I think, okay, so a deciduous tree, one that's lost its leaves, is going to grow in this nice opening. What could grow there? Even though these are very small, I know that these are a black birch. Now the right way I know is a fun little trick, is that if you ever see one of these small trees growing out in the opening like this with sunlight, you can just peel a little bark, it's off with your fingernail, don't pull the whole um, limb off. Just give it a little sniff. Now, that smells strongly of birch beer or root beer or wintergreen but it has a very fragrant smell. Okay. So here we have a red maple. Now, again, because it's still kind of wintry, springy, it doesn't have any leaves. Maple leaf is very identifiable. There's one on the ground. Oh, that's an oak leaf. There we go. Maple leaves are very identifiable. They have these five points to their lobes. Must look like a beautiful star. But as you can see, there's leaves on the ground everywhere. So we can't tell it from its leaves. Can we tell it from its bark? Well, not always. So maple bark can be really different even on trees that are the same age. And it looks flaky sometimes, but sometimes it can be more compact. So the real way you can tell a maple tree in springtime is because of its buds and its flowers. Now they have these tiny red flowers that look like little bursts. This maple is very old and so it's pretty tall, but I found some on the ground. So you can see there are these little red flowers with all these tiny little um, these stamens coming out of the middle of them. And these anthers, they've got pollen on the end. So maybe if I can find a smaller one, we can get a better look. But for now, look for the little red flowers, for the big red maple. So I'm here underneath a sugar maple. And now this is the type of tree that gives sap for us to make into maple syrup. Now all trees give sap, but the sugar maple gives a lot of sap. So one more thing about maples, a good way to identify them is they have opposite branching. Now, instead of having alternate, which is when you have your limb and the branches come out one and then the other, almost like stairs, these come out at the same place, but in opposite directions. So these have opposite branching. And if you come close here, you can see an example of what I mean. Right here, do you see that? That is an example of opposite branching. All right, here I am standing between two trees. Take a good look at the bark of both these trees. You might say smooth, rough, they've got to be different types, right? No, both are red maples. This is just a perfect example of how tricky tree identification can be because this red maple has flaky, rough bark. This one has smooth. They seem roughly the same age, if you look at how high they're um, growing. But um, I would have to be looking, you know, either at their, their branching. So remember, maples have uh, opposite branching where their branches come off like this, rather than alternate. And at the top, where you can see the buds. Sometimes it can be tricky, but it's always, you know, you get better through practice. 